Welcome everyone to the Frostman webinar. It's, it's early afternoon for us. Good morning to everyone on our good evening and good morning, good afternoon for everyone on different time zones. Uh, this is the Frostma webinar about front-end development for headless CMS. And um, we actually started to have this uh, idea for this webinar because a lot among our customers, we kept on getting the questions that, okay, I have bought into the benefits of headless CMS, but now I need to figure out what to do with the front-end. So we are here to trying to answer the questions and give you some trends and some best practices. But first, we'll do some introductions. Um, before we go further, so my name is Maya here at Frasmo. I work with our partners and uh, I'm really into to all the digital experiences and how they are just changing the world we live in. And here with me I have my colleague Rika. Hey, and uh, I'm a technical project manager and contentful specialist here at Frasmo. And in my daily work I communicate with many of our clients and I get to actually see this on daily basis that how the companies are changing to headless systems. Yeah, so Rika is going to share some best practices, practic practical examples what she has learned in customer projects. Here's now the agenda for the webinar. I'll talk a little bit about market trends, what's happening on global scale, what's sort of driving this separation of front and back end, the headless CMS trends, um, then we'll give you a quick overview of what is the separated front end. We won't go into the details and terminology, but then go right on to the pros and cons of headless CMS and what you need to take into consideration. Uh, then we'll talk about the most typical setup we see, which means that there is a headless CMS, uh, then there is a front end created with React, Angular or Vue, and then Frosmo to use, use the top for development and experience optimization. Then what's really important, even though we talk about technology trends, uh, to actually get them to work and to get all the benefits, you need to think about the roles and the processes in the organization. So that's one, one topic we have. Then as, as we, like our business is a lot uh, also about personalization. So we'll, Rika will explain a little bit on how it's possible and how it's actually easier with this setup. And then she will so show a practical demo of personalization and then we'll go through the questions and answers. And um, yeah, there is the questions and answers panel in GoToWebinar. So please feel free to submit questions during the webinar. We will answer all the questions at the end of the webinar. So the first thing, what are the market trends we actually see? in the world. So we speak a lot with the industry analysts, uh, we speak with our customers, we speak with partners, and there are certain market trends that seem to be global nowadays. Uh, first one are the growing uh, uh, consumer expectations for superior user experience. It's not anymore enough to be pretty good. You have to be really good. And for everyone who's there who's into digital marketing, you also know that AdWords are getting more and more expensive, so you cannot buy your way on top of the ranks anymore. You actually have to be smooth, uh, smooth in your experiences. Uh, then there is this entire trend of adoption of microservices, uh, headless architecture, headless e-commerce, or headless CMS. Uh, then there are these magic words I already mentioned here, uh, Angular and React, which are really popular JavaScript frameworks and they are just used more and more on the front-end development. Uh, then I guess nowadays there is no webinar without the thought of artificial intelligence. And if you think of uh, either gathering data for artificial intelligence or uh, deploying artificial intelligence functionalities to your website, you need to have uh, the flexibility at the front-end. You need to separate your front-end and your back-end. Otherwise, you cannot get the benefits of, of AI. And as last things, uh, there are the new ways of interacting with companies, the augmented reality, virtual real reality, and all these new devices that uh, you always, of course, want your content to be usable on all the devices. So those are the trends. Yeah, Maya, yeah, Maya from this, um, I would like to actually take two, and maybe we can discuss a bit mm -hmm. more of those, because I think this uh, the superior UX, it has been 
there for quite some time. Yeah. So companies have been doing A-B testing and CRO in mm -hmm. order to really mm -hmm. optimize their website. Yeah. And um, that's well quite obvious mm -hmm. because many of the companies don't have mm -hmm. really these like physical stores anymore. Yeah. So yeah. all their interaction with the clients is online. Yeah. So the user experience has to be really good. Mm -hmm. And the other one that I feel is really like booming currently is the frameworks. So whoever I talk to I feel like it's like always the, the words react, angular, and these mm -hmm. are coming yeah. into the conversation. Do you like have some thoughts why it is so or? Yeah, uh -huh. I have actually a couple of things to share mm. on that. So first of all, the uh, expectation level for the user experience, it's not coming from the direct competitor anymore. And if you are a travel agency, it's not the other travel agency that's setting the bar for the, for the digital experience. It is actually these global giants. I've got now the sort of top five ones listed here. And pretty much every single one of your customers is using at least Google, probably all of these vendors. And they set the bar for user experience. That's what I expect. I mean, if I go to Google or I get my, my new phone, I expect that all my digital experiences are as good as what I'm getting from these vendors. So uh, then you really need to be able to match that expectations, uh, be better, be something uh, that's more relevant. And then as you know your customer, you can always then be good enough and then offer something personal for them. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other word also on the JavaScript frameworks, that was a good question. And uh, I uh, started sort of getting the same question maybe, I don't know, six months ago. And I really wasn't uh, paying attention until, until recently. Uh, we've seen this, and um, I've heard this term actually yesterday, I was listening to a, a Seth Godin podcast, and he was talking about connection economy. So nowadays the value is not created on the assembly line. The value is created within the connections. So creating connections between people, creating the connections between companies. And uh, the wi winners in the new economy are the companies that are creating most connections. And these JavaScript frameworks are becoming important to understand for every single e-commerce manager, digital marketing uh, manager, because they are becoming the de facto way of developing your digital experience layer. So it's not anymore the built-in ready uh, front end from your traditional CMS. We have these developers who are connecting on global scale. Uh, the three main frameworks are uh, started or sort of driven by Google, Facebook, or then sort of ex Google folks. And um, the developers are coming into these open source communities, sharing ideas, sharing functionalities. And whenever, if there is a question, if they're developing something and there is a question, the answer can always be found online. And that's what's making these frameworks so popular and uh, they are really becoming the way of sort of de facto of developing the front end. And that's why it's good to understand what are the pros and cons of these frameworks as well. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, I think you can really see the social proof there. Yeah, the social yeah. proof is there. Yeah. It's, it's really, really strong. Yeah. Um, as I said in the beginning, we're not going to go like deep into there's a lot of discussion like what's headless, what's decoupled and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, we'll show you one image on what the overall architecture looks like. Oops, excuse me, I no. quickly jumped one slide over. Go ahead, Rika. Yeah, so um, here you can see kind of like the separated front end and back end. So if we start from the bottom of the illustration, you can see all your back end systems where inside this website management, you have your CMS and your e comm system. And Typically, these two kind of have been fighting over that who gets to deliver the front end. But if we go to this like separate system or separate architecture there, um, the front end is built separately with these modern frameworks as Maya just described. And then the front end communicates with the back end through APIs. So I think that's kind of describing it yeah. in a nutshell. That's really, really good. Mm. And uh, of course, there's <laughs> always the big promise. Yeah. So what, if you don't know yet or if you're not mm. sure, what are the benefits? What can I get mm -hmm. with this setup? Okay. So if we start from the, uh, the content. 
So, as I said earlier, mining companies don't really have, like, for they don't have physical stores, they don't have physical products anymore. Mm -hmm. The content is the product. So, of course, they want to con like deliver this content to as many uh, touch points as possible. So, you need to have your content separately from your frameworks and your front end because you want to build different types of front ends. And then um, the other big benefits of this is that your developers will like it because they get to use the most recent modern frameworks. They don't need to be dependent on the backend systems that are there. And uh, then they have the community support as well, of course. And uh, then switching the software components, as you saw in the image, um, everything is separate. So you don't have this big monolithic system that you need to change at once. So you can change and switch, switch the components one at a time. And this also results in the faster time to market because you can switch one component. You don't need to build the whole system from scratch. Great. Uh, of course, nothing mm. is perfect. Mm. So uh, there is also mm. some challenges to consider and which we advise our customers to consider mm -hmm. before they move on to this headless setup. Yeah. Can you Rika, tell a little bit of your experience, what you've seen? Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's the easiest way to start is that, like, to explain like what are we used to. So I think like all the car, like CMSs usually have some kind of targeting or tracking features built in. Mm -hmm. So, but in the headless system you don't have these. Yeah. So you miss all of those. Then also this kind of governance features, for example, approval process. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Yeah. Uh, then taking the headless approach, it requires you to really like recreate the processes as well. Mm -hmm. How do you actually work? So you need to ch start, like you change the way that you think your content mm -hmm. from like page centric way that you have your front page, you have your summer campaign page, yeah. more towards this kind of like topic uh, centered way. And this also, um, it results in usually you don't have enough resources yeah. planned for this because there's quite a bit of work. So I think these are the main challenges. Yeah, de definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's if I mm -hmm. had to pick one from the, what you were just explaining, when we mm -hmm. go talk to our customers, the first thing they normally say is that, well, I kind of underestimated the effort needed by front end. Mm -hmm. What can you do to help me? So yeah. the setup, uh, this is a, a familiar image, Rikka was explaining this sort of common headless way. And if you notice, we've added one more arrow there, which is the Frosmo tag or connector. So basically when Frosmo tag is added to the website header, this allows to utilize our built-in features for the front-end development. And that makes it a smoother, less resource intensive and easier to manage. And there are sort of three basic uh, functionalities that we bring on the table. The first one is the continuous front-end development using using any framework. And I just got a question on this yesterday that, okay, well, how can you really make it more efficient? But the idea is that with Frosmo, that can be made modular. So there is certain module uh, for certain feature and it doesn't need to be one gigantic React um, application that you build at the front-end. Uh, then the middle part, is, is definitely important for all online business teams. So the experience optimization, there is the online testing, A-B testing is kind of the common, common word often used. Uh, then there is behavioral targeting or personalization, and that ties right into the expectation of the consumer because they expect that I get the relevant thing for me, I don't need to see everything. And third one, uh, really gold for all, all online businesses are the recommendations. So from this gigantic sortiment, actually being able to offer what's relevant uh, and recommend what's relevant for your customer. And the last part, which also often comes as a surprise, are the data tracking and AI modeling. So if you go with this headless setup, uh, you might not have your old, old uh, data tracking functionalities available. The other thing is that when all the like, customer interaction is at the front end, there is so much data you can track. And with Frosmo, we can track anything that's happening on the front end. That, that's really a um, good starting point for, for improving your digital experiences. And then when you get the data, then you can actually build your AI models 
and then through Frosmo inject the predictions to the site. So that's the Frosmo in a nutshell. Uh, then, mm. uh, Rika, I have a question for you in terms mm -hmm. of the roles and processes, because this is something that um, mm. also comes as a surprise mm. often that, you know, if I change my system, I really need to rethink my roles and processes. Yeah. Um, I will briefly say something about your uh, um, Frosmo, thing. Frosmo right. slide and presentation yeah. about this continuous uh, front end development. We kind of covered that topic mm. in the previous mm. webinar. So that was, we have this feature called uh, workspaces that you can use where you actually develop uh, in the production environment, in an, like in an isolated environment mm -hmm. in the production uh, site. So you can do very fast iterations and so on over mm -hmm. there and don't have this kind of heavy uh, deployment processes and so on. Uh, but today, like as you already uh, showed, we will go and check more uh, personalization because yeah. I thought that it's good to cover another topic yeah. that what you can do with Frosmo. But now we can jump to the to, to the the, uh, yeah. the roles and processes. So it might make more sense now because we really talk about the personalization roles here. So the new architecture actually allows each of the uh, people to choose their own tools. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to settle with the common decision because mm -hmm. each of these will talk through APIs mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And um, what Frosmo offers in personalization, it's a tool for the e-commerce manager, for example, that can utilize the content that has been created by the content creator, as well as utilize the templates that are for front end built by the front end developer, and then assign these to like when they do data tracking through Frosmo, so they know what type of audi audiences they have, so then they can actually target specified content to these audiences. Mm -hmm. so this is the workflow that is built for the mm -hmm. e-com managers. And then um, I think we can talk a bit more about the personalization. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. this, see the orange arrow, so there's data mm -hmm. tracking uh, coming from the site mm -hmm. and then targeted content mm -hmm. flowing to the site through Frosma. So now there are a lot of new things or sort of new ways of thinking mm -hmm. which are brought into the personalization game now with the mm -hmm. headless CMS. Yeah. So um, if we start from like a really big picture, so I think like would it be great if you could have this kind of service that kind of adapts to whatever you're doing over there on the website or in whichever well, device that you're yeah. using. Yeah. And uh, well, it kind of sounds like mission impossible to me, at least yeah. like how would we do it? It requires AI, it requires mm -hmm. a lot of things, but at least I think with uh, when you have this kind of headless system where your content is structured in some other way than like really page centrically. So you have the content um, in a database so that it's really like it has the tags so you can just get the content related to some topic this already mm -hmm. is a big step forward, mm -hmm. I would say. And then you have the chance to actually do personalization because you can retrieve the... Yeah, that's really cool. Content. And, and where uh, you say I was going to say something about <laughs> dynamic. So mm -hmm. the headless uh, CMS mm -hmm. also allows you to provide dynamic personalized mm -hmm. content. So mm -hmm. what happened is sort of that a traditional setup might be that you have a customer journey which is um, static and it works as long as the content is mm. not changing. But in the headless setup, when you actually manage these pieces of content, then uh, they can be more dynamic. And then mm. what you offer to your client is, is more dynamic. Yeah, as that's well. actually true. Yeah. yeah. But I think like uh, starting, like visualizing, like what is the actual user journey? Who are there? What types of visitors you have in different steps? Uh, that's like the key of thinking this personalization process as well. And um, I think you need to start with baby steps. Yeah. I will demo one example from our own website so that you can see um, how it yeah. works in practice. So we'll move on to the demo. Mm. There is a quick change on the presenter because we'll change that to Rika's mm. laptop. So let's check that it works. Yeah, yeah. we have it. Looks like a beautiful summary <laughs> picture there. <laughs> yeah, it is. And um, 
just to start with, the, our website's main uh, purpose is to get people to sign up for a demo. But we have noticed that it doesn't really happen on the first go. So when the visitor comes to the site, they need to know a bit about the product. They want to browse by themselves for a while before there is someone who gives them the demo of the platform. So, and we have noticed that the reference stores, as you, Maya, were talking about the social proof earlier, yeah, yeah. just like in there, the reference stories is the key. Mm -hmm. So this is the most popular content on our website. And uh, I actually just booked tickets to this uh, Ed Sheeran concert yesterday. So <laughs> the venue point, so Evan Tim caught my eye here. So I'm just going to go and read this. And at the same time as I landed to this page, what Frosmo did on the background is that it stamped my browser so that now we know that I have already shown interest. I have kind of jumped in our user journey mm -hmm. from the, the new user's face to someone who has already visited and browsed some content. But unfortunately, this time I don't have time to read anymore or go through any other stories. So I'm just going to close the browser. But next time, when I come back, Frosmo remembers this. So now we think that it's... No more summer. <laughs> yeah, no more summer. And now it's all about signing up for a demo. Because I already read the stories. Based on our analytics, uh, we have noticed that the second time the visitor comes to the website, that's the point when they are very likely already to sign up. So that's why I have the sign up for a demo here. Mm -hmm. So and it's easy to find when I click it. I land on our contact page mm -hmm. where I can uh, sign up for a demo. And then also this information can be then pushed directly to our marketing systems and to our CRM. That was the end of my demo. Maya, do you have any questions about this or was it all? Yeah, I think it's a really uh, fun, quick demo. And uh, this is really what we see in customer projects. There is sort of this mismatch of, of expectations that when, mm. when an organization is taken to use this new headless CMS, of course, online business and mar digital marketing are really excited about it. And the first thing uh, they want to start doing is, is typically this behavioral mm. targeting. That, mm. okay, when I have this group of visitors who are coming to the site the next, next time, I want them to see something different. And then what happens is that, well, you know, we had the old CMS, it was kind of clunky, but it actually had the features built in. But now we're in the headless setup, so it's not there. Yeah. So there is this sort of a, like a mismatch of expectations that, that business is expecting that, of course, all the mm -hmm. targeting and testing and data tracking, it's there, uh, but it's not. So that's what you want mm -hmm. to take into consideration when moving on to the headless setup is that the, right away when it's launched, uh, it needs to be further to developed, personalized. There is this ongoing development. There is no more such thing as a ready website. So yeah, yeah. that was a good quick yeah. example. I'm jumping back to my screen. Uh, if, if you remember from the agenda, so demo was kind of the last point um, in terms of what we had, what we had prepared. Uh, but now we have some time for questions and answers. So I'll um, jump onto that slide and then I'll, I'll, I'll open up the questions and answers from GoToWebinar. So please feel free to submit the questions. Mm, and of course, always the first question I have mm. to say is the one that is the recording going to be available afterwards. So yeah. yes, it is. We'll let you know and whoever has registered for the webinar, mm. you'll get the recording and you'll get the slides afterwards. Yeah, Maya, there was actually another question that came in earlier was that about like, what if I have no chance to yeah. moving into headless? So, but how can I still achieve the same yeah. benefits? Yeah. So um, perhaps I can yeah. answer yeah. to this as well is like the, you can use Frosmo for it. So Frosmo enables you with most of these mm -hmm. benefits because you can change the front end experience through the Frosmo JavaScript. So you don't need to build the whole, whole headless setup yeah. for yourself. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Thank you. Uh, mm. How about then, maybe just going kind of back to basics. What is the main driver? Why should I choose headless CMS? Um, well, I think it's the, the touch points. I would say yeah. that 
because if you have the page centric way yeah. of structuring yeah. your content yeah. then you are in trouble when yeah. you want to use multiple touch points yeah. but when you have your content structured it's easier yeah. to spread it to multiple yeah yeah this is and that's also the the magic word we hear often is the mm. omni channel. Yeah. That I, I want to be use my content in all channels. I want it to be there. I want to read the my potential customers wherever they happen mm. to be. Um, how about then the other way around? When should I absolutely not <laughs> choose the headless mm. CMS? Do you have any like comments based on your experience on that one? Um not really. Like I think for some companies, it might be like a bigger mm -hmm. project to yeah. do, some smaller, but I think anyone can yeah. can choose this way of yeah. Yeah. going as well. Yeah, I, I think that we had the slide mm. on the challenges. Mm. So you have to like prepare and predict mm. that those challenges are there. Yeah. So that's, it's good to know mm. that what's kind of coming ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see any other questions. So if there are questions that are submitted later, we will mm. uh, answer them via email. Otherwise, yeah. I thank you, Rika, and thank you. By the way, uh, I'll show our contact information. So mm -hmm. anything, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach us at sales at frostma com, and we'll keep you posted on the upcoming webinars. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.